Hi all, good day. Today we are going to see about vocabularies. What exactly vocabularies are? Exactly, I'm taking this topic today because I have got a lot of uh, email and a lot of messages, text messages on my WhatsApp stating to check and uh, tell about what vocabularies are all about and when, where, how, and why exactly make use of vocabularies. Let it be your IELTS, let it be your PTE, let it be OET, or let it be any kind of business English or any any part of thing which is exactly related to English. You need that. We need this vocabulary part. What exactly is a vocabulary? Where am I supposed to make use of it? How am I supposed to make use of it? If for for some people it's a million dollar question, isn't it? Yes. Let's see how exactly vocabularies works and how exactly we are supposed to make use of the vocabularies. Now, what are vocabularies? First of all, we have to understand one thing. When we are speaking in English, as an Indian speaker, as a person who is speaking, uh, as an Indian English speaker, we don't make use of a lot of vocabularies. We don't make use of the English words, the proper English words, the precise English words. What I'm, trying to say is, uh, what I'm trying to say is the richment of English, the richness in English words we are not making use of. For example, if you're making use of a word called friendly, this is a proper word. We make use of this word on a very normal English part. But if you want to show your richness, richness in English, what we are supposed to do? We are supposed to Give a synonym for this word. What exactly is a synonym for this word? Friendly. How exactly this sounds? Amicable. Look at that. Friendly, amicable. So wherever you're supposed to make yourself friendly, instead of that, when you start making yourself amicable by default, you are getting into your vocabulary part. So, is there any rule? Is there a rule book? There is no rule book basically. But how can I make yourself? How can I? Strengthen my English with the vocabulary part. How can I practice on this? What exactly we can do is, we, for example, you can go for any exam, let it be IELTS, OET, or as I told you before, or you just want to improve your communication part, I would highly recommend at least getting trained at least with two to three vocabularies every day. For example, let's take the same word, amicable. I know. The meaning of the word is going to be friendly. How can I invest time on this thing? So that investing time on this thing is going to enrich and enhance my English. Again, enrich and enhance is a vocabulary. For example, first thing is I'm supposed to learn nothing less than two vocabularies each and every day. For example, today I'm learning about amicable. What am I supposed to do first? I'm supposed to understand the synonym for this. Okay, what is amicable? Amicable means friendly. Now, what am I supposed to do? If I start reading amicable is friendly, next 30 minutes, this word is already gone. You will be busy doing some other activities and by default, friendly will stay with you forever because that is the word which we are, what, making use of for almost 20-25 like years, depending on your age, isn't it? So, all of a sudden, I'm introducing our word uh, I'm getting introduced to a word, isn't it? What can I do? The best way is working for me for many years and is working for my students for almost like 20 years. So they should work for you also. How exactly? Look at that. Now I got the word amicable. What am I supposed to do is, I know the meaning for the word amicable equal to friendly. Now what I'm supposed to do is, I'm supposed to form at least two to three sentences out of it. That's number one. I'm supposed to form at least two to three sentences out of it. Why exactly am I supposed to do this? When you start repeating things by default, consciously or unconsciously, by default it is exactly getting into your subconscious mind. Anything which exactly gets into your subconscious mind, by default this is going to stay with you forever. I'll give you a small example for that. It's not a small example, it's such a great example. I got this example when I was taking a seminar, when I was attending a seminar back in University of Cambridge. Yeah, the, the lady, the person who was taking the seminar, she gave a great, beautiful, excellent, marvelous uh, example. She exactly related 
the subconscious mind. She gave an example for the subconscious mind, how exactly this works with our alphabets. What is that? Our A, B, C, D stuff. We did this alphabet back and what? In the kindergarten. When we were doing our kindergarten part, we were doing this A, B, C, D. But still now, you can be like um, 20 years or you can be 8 years, 80 years, you know, like still, even even at that time, you'll be exactly remembering that A, B, C, D. Why exactly A for apple, B for boy, C for cat? Why exactly we started repeating things? We started A for apple, B for boy, C for cat. And we started referring things. This is what is needed. For you to improve your vocabulary part. First thing is, you should repeat things. That is what we are doing. Second thing is, you are referring. By default, you are exactly practicing by default. That is what is needed. For example, how exactly? First thing is, I am doing my two to three sentences. I am forming, I am writing at least two to three sentences. For example, India and Pakistan should always have amicable relation amicable relation what exactly is that friendly relation look at that friendly here it is amicable so we start writing at least two to three sentences each and every day each and every day by default what exactly i'm doing i'm repeating things when i start repeat 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 this is how the brain works first you're supposed to feed the brain because for the brain amicable is completely new you're supposed to what you're supposed to insist the brain you have done the brain hey amicable equal to friendly amicable equal to friendly that's why you, you're repeating things when you start repeating things that is number one yeah, you are exactly writing two to three sentences for one vocabulary. Second thing what you are supposed to do is, you are supposed to implement this, you are supposed to implement this amicable in your conversation. You can ask me a question. You will ask me a question. Stating, hey Karan, how exactly can I implement this thing? This is such a new word for me. Initially, as I told you before, initially you have to insist it. Initially you have to do it. Initially, you have to take the opportunity or you have to create the opportunity to make you so amicable. Initially, it's not going to be easy. Practically speaking, initially, nothing is easy as we know. Yeah. But when you start doing it again, 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 you will love it. If you have the love for English, if you have the love or if you, if you are like so eager to speak in English on a very proper, precise note, by default, this is going to be nothing for you. You will do it. I'm pretty much sure you will do it. So when you start making two to three sentences. Second thing is you start implementing wherever you get the opportunity or create the opportunity to talk about friendly, you will make use of amicable. When you start doing this thing, I promise you next 10 days, for example, two days in a, a two, uh, two vocabularies or per day, by default 10 into two, 20, 20 vocabularies. Just think of adding 20 vocabularies in your English. Just look at then look at your English. Then, what, what exactly people are going to uh, tell about your English? They are going to be like, they are going to be amazed. Again, amazed is in the vocabulary, isn't it? So what you're going to do is each and every day you are going to exactly work on your vocabulary part. So when you do this thing, it's not only for your competitive exams or it's not only for your IELTS, TOEFL, or any kind of exams. But even if you want to build your proper communication part this is going to be huge for you yeah this is going to be a blessing for you yeah but there was one um, uh, a person who asked me a question hey Kanan, uh you know what we have been told we have been pushed to uh, look into uh, what the editorials like the hindu uh deccan chronicle when we are students you know uh, for example book stand six standard your teacher, my teacher, they normally used to tell what? They used to tell us that is like if you want to improve English, just open the Hindu paper or just go through Hindi paper and by default your language will improve. Yeah, it's 50% yes and 50% big no. Why exactly it is? For example, when you look at your Hindu paper or Dickin Chronicle or any editorial, any as of now, any Indian editorial or your newspapers, by default when you come across a lot of words, a lot of unknown words, 
If you just go through the sentence with the word which you don't have any idea, what is going to be understanding about it? So what you're supposed to do is, you're supposed to take the hard word. You're supposed to take the vocabulary from it, understand the meaning from any kind of thing. Just Google it by default, you will get the meaning for it. Once you got the meaning for it, start doing two to three sentences. What you're doing, you're repeating it. Second thing is, you have to implement it. You have to implement it in your communication part of the early years. If you do that, I promise you, 10 to 15 days, I'm pretty much sure your English is going to take nothing less than 10 to 15% on a higher note.